We're going to go ahead and get started. Open up for this Passover. We ask that brothers uncover your heads, sisters cover your heads. We will face Jerusalem and open up. Babies, be quiet. <laughs> Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But forgive us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endure forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endure forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Today's reading came from Philippians 2, verses 3 through 11. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Test. Testing one. My Test. check. Testing. For thy love is better than wine. Because of the Savior, thy good ointment, thy name is this ointment poured forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee? Draw me. We'll run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We'll be glad and rejoice in thee. Who remember thy love more than wine? The upright love me. Oh 
I'm looking higher, 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 to be close. I'm looking higher, higher, higher. I wanna be close, Lord, Lord. Sing. Come on, y'all. We celebrate today. Yes. Bring your. Yes. Bring your people close. Yes. Guide my. My footsteps. Bring your people. the Father which I have sent him draw me, and I will raise him up at the last day. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous ran into it, and it's safe. A man that have friends must show himself friendly. And there's a friend that stick up closer than a brother. Amen. Yes. Testing, testing. Happy Passover, everybody.
Oh, you are the King of glory. Yeah.
Hey, hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Maybe y'all can do that one at the end again. <laughs> y'all don't mind. Y'all got to remind me because I'm getting old. Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody tuning in on the internet, Facebook, telephone, conference line. As we're doing the usual, because we're here every Friday night. For, for you all that don't know, we're here every Friday night. <laughs> so this is usual. We have a Friday Sabbath evening lesson. But this is, a, this is a special occasion, a yearly celebration known as the Passover. And though most people who, who think they believe in Jesus ignore it, we know it's of utmost importance. It's all about Jesus. And you got a clear distinction this year. Yeah, it's a little hot, a little crowded, but we're going to be all right. Y'all can get close to each other. Hopefully we'll have a little more room in a few weeks. So we was running out of chairs for the people in the back. But like I was saying, you got a clear-cut distinction this year. Every year you got you got to make a choice, but this year is real tight being that you really showing who you believe in specifically on this day because the world called this day Good Friday, and it is a Friday according to man's calendar. Uh, and they celebrate it, but still, they don't know anything about the Passover. And they, they hook Good Friday up with Easter Sunday, which neither of the two have anything to do with Jesus. But the Passover that's all over our Bible, the Bible that everybody claimed to base their religion on, nobody acknowledges. And it is what Jesus is about. So that's the title. We're going to get right into it. Jesus is Passover. Not Good Friday nor Easter Sunday. Well, not Sunday. I ain't not want to make the title that long, but everybody know Easter is Sunday. Jesus is Passover, not Good Friday nor Easter those celebrations that man is doing, people fill, people fill in the st stores, supermarkets today trying to get stuff, getting ready. This was a day off for a lot of people. And they're getting ready for Easter Sunday. But yet the thing that's in their Bible that they claim to base Jesus on, everybody ignores. And that's a shame. And again, you, you got to choose who you're going to worship and who you're going to serve. And you show who you believe in by your actions. That's how you show up. We're going to get into it, though. We're going to start off in John, the fourth chapter. Because we've been made to think, well, if you just say you believe on Jesus and call on Jesus, then it don't really matter. It mattered. Greatly, brothers and sisters, because anything short of obeying God according to what's written in the scriptures is serving another God or obeying another God. We can't do both. There's no way. It even tells you, you cannot drink of the Lord's table and the table of devils in 1 Corinthians 10. So you can't do both. That's why we had a choice today. Those would understand it. It was an easy choice to make sure we are celebrating the Passover. We don't even bother to call it communion or none of that because it's what it is. It's the Passover. And it's a yearly festival. And Israel been doing it since ancient time when they came out of Egypt. That show you the omnipotence of God. He was showing you his plan when Israel came out of Egypt. A thousand years before Jesus came and died. Well in advance. So Israel always been worshiping Jesus because this was set up to honor him. He is the lamb. They had to kill a lamb in Egypt. They killed a bunch of lambs in Egypt that first Passover. 
But it wasn't about the lambs that they killed. It was about the lamb that was going to get killed a thousand years later. It's all about him. But thankfully, people wake it up. That's how we got here. Because I grew up, I didn't know nothing about this. I didn't care about none of it. I wasn't even going, I wouldn't even care about going. Most people went to church on Sunday. I was dodging that on Easter Sunday. Because, you know, everybody goes Easter Sunday. Get some new clothes. You ain't been to church all year. And you go on Easter Sunday. They're going to be doing it this Sunday. The only day people go. Uh, John 4 and verse 22, Jesus is Passover. Not Good Friday nor Easter Sunday. And Jesus told this lady something, and it fits a lot of people nowadays, brothers and sisters. Read it. One verse. Ye worship, ye know not what. Uh Uh-huh. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. See, this is cut and dry to the point. He was talking to somebody. We're not bothering to get into all the details and intricacies of the conversation But he was talking to a non-Israelite woman, a Samaritan woman, and she thought she knew about worshiping God. She thought she knew about it. And Jesus had to enlighten her that she really don't know what she called herself worshiping. So he said, ye worship, ye know not what. That's what people been doing all their life. That's what people doing today, calling it Good Friday. And they celebrate Easter Sunday when when we're going to be celebrating. We're going to be here. We're going to be here Sunday because it's a holy day, but it don't have nothing to do with Easter. People are probably going to mistake us. Oh, yeah, y'all doing Easter. No. Nope. That's why I said you got a distinction. It's, the, it's a clear distinction on whether you serve in the God of the Bible or you serve in some man-made stuff, which ultimately go back to Satan. It's clear cut. So, like I got a lesson titled, All Worship is Not Good Worship, just because you call yourself. That's what we've been made to think. Oh, you know, you worship your way, I worship my way. Not according to what Jesus just said. Read that again, verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. See, he said, you worshiping something you don't even know what you were. See, she called herself believing in God. She called. It, she tried to tell Jesus about God. Imagine that. Ye worship, you know not what. Then he turned it around and said, we. Not just him. Everybody should know Jesus know what it's about. But he didn't just limit it to him. He set it up among, around his people. So he said, we know what we worship. Then he hit her with the probably one of the most overlooked segments in the Bible, salvation is of the Jews. Right. How can you get around that if you're trying to get salvation? That means you need to figure out that God can set it up with his people. That's why it's, it's ludicrous when people say, well, that's for the Jews, even though it came from God. Well, according to this, Jesus said salvation is of the Jews, didn't he? So that lets you know, yeah, everything God gave it to the Jews. But if you want to be with the God of this Bible, the creator of heaven and earth, you're going to have to get with it, no matter whether you're a Jew, Gentile, whoever you are. You're going to have to get with the program. This is what Jesus was telling this lady right here. He was letting her know, look, you can get it, but you got to know where to come get it from. It's like I say all the time that, hey, I, don't, I, I know I don't have to go to Rome to a pilgrimage and stand before the Pope. The Pope need to come here because we the ones got it. Salvation is of the Jews. He didn't say it was of Italy or Rome. He didn't even say it was of Arabia, China, Ethiopia, none of those. He said salvation is of the Jews. So when people tell you, even though it's not in the Bible, and that's just some made-up thing to trick you, but when they say, well, that's the Christians, that's for the Christians, and that's for the Jews, well, if you got some sis, you're going to pick the one that's for the Jews. Like they say, that's the Christian Sabbath. That's one that man made up, though. The real Sabbath that Christ himself honored, they call that the Jewish Sabbath. 
Oh, that's for the Jews. Look, it's always given to the Jews. Thou shalt not kill was given to the Jews, but it's good for everybody. So that lets you know that's why we follow the things that was given to the people of the Bible. It's in the Bible for a reason. The Passover, yes, it was given to Israel. It is for everybody, though, obviously. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. So this set the stage to know why we definitely should be honoring what the Lord put in the scripture that he gave to Israel, or you could say Jews. That's just shorthand. We definitely need to honor that as opposed to anything else, let alone some man-made stuff, which is what Good Friday and Easter. You don't have no Good Friday in the Bible. Jesus didn't even die on a Friday. It just fell on a Friday this year because it rotates every year because it's on a date of the month. So it's going to rotate. But the year he got crucified, it was not a Friday because he was out of the grave before the sun came up on Sunday and he had to be in the grave for three days, right. three, four days. So it couldn't have been a Friday. And then they say that he rose on Easter Sunday, which, again, he was out of the grave before it got light on that first day. It was a, what they call Sunday because it was the first day of the week, but he was gone already. 2 Corinthians 11, read that one verse, verse 4, because we need to understand that just because you say you believe in Jesus, because I know people running around today saying they believe in Jesus. And, oh, he died on Good Friday. And that'll make you think, well, it shouldn't matter if you worshiping Jesus. They worshiping Jesus. We all got Jesus. No, you got the wrong one, baby. <laughs> That's what Ray Charles said. He said, you got the right. We got the right one, baby. <laughs> Second Corinthians 11 and verse 4. Read it. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Oh, you can, somebody can come. See, Paul was warning these newly converted Corinthians to beware of somebody coming preaching another Jesus. How are they going to do that? Because they fabricating. They giving you a false Jesus that they have made up. They can concoct it one. So it's a false Jesus that people acknowledging Talk today talking about Good Friday and you totally ignoring what Jesus is really about and that's this past. How many people you hear talking about the past over the day? That's not among us. When we at work and wherever we was, whatever we was doing, matter of fact, we went to the school we trying to buy. A few of us went over there and the guy, of course, the guy who's showing us the school, the, 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 the guy over there, he said, y'all make sure y'all go to church on Easter. Of course, some of the sisters tried to jump them. They was, well, that's a shame when the sisters going to do it. It's like, just leave them alone. Leave them alone. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. It's only one true Jesus, brothers and sisters. But if you are following some teaching, not According to the Bible, which Jesus already substantiated, that it's given to the Jews. The way to get salvation is given to the Jews, brother and sister. I'm just pointing that out because that's what they say about a day like the past. Oh, that's for the Jews. It makes no sense if it's one God. Whatever way it is, it's for everybody. Right. But even according to Jesus' word, yeah, he gave it to the Jews and if you want salvation, you're going to get what he gave to them. But if you're dealing with something else, that's how they give you another Jesus. For if he that come and preach it another Jesus, whom what? Whom we have not preached. Whom we have not preached. Go ahead. Or if ye receive another spirit, uh -huh. which ye have not received. Go ahead. Or another gospel, which ye have not accepted. What might happen? Ye might well bear with him. So he's warning them. Look. Matter of fact, this, this, he was really concerned about their welfare, their welfare, their salvation, because this is serious business. You got to either follow what the Lord said or you're going to be going the wrong way. He said, so I'm concerned that if somebody come preach another Jesus or by another spirit or another gospel, you might get caught up with that. I'm, he basically said, I'm worried about you. So much for being saved, too. 
Why Paul would have to worry if you were just automatically saved if you called on Jesus? No, you could be called on another Jesus. If you celebrating Good Friday and Easter Sunday, you got yourself another Jesus. Leviticus 23. Let's show you what the Jesus of the Bible said and did and gave us. This was him back here in Leviticus, by the way, talking. He's not called the word for nothing. He's called the word because he's been talking from day one. He told you that in Isaiah 48. Some of these Hebrews that, that, that know they Israel, but they kick on Jesus, kick on, some of them kick on the whole New Testament. Oh, y'all worshiping another God, y'all worshiping that Jesus. That's a false God. Look, Jesus talking all through the Old Testament. They don't know it. You can cut that up so easy. Isaiah 48, 16, that's... One being, Jesus, talking about how he created everything in the beginning. He said, I was in the beginning. I've been speaking from day one. And now when the Lord sent me, well, wait a minute. You in the beginning. He said, I created everything. And then he turned around and said, when the Lord sent me, you're going to know who, who you're dealing with. Because right. that was him talking about being sent by the Father in Isaiah 48. Because he's the word. So he's been talking. He's talking in Leviticus right here. Listen to him. Leviticus 23 and 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Uh huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Oh, yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel. Because he gave everything to the children of Israel. Jew just became short for Israel because the ten tribes was already in captivity during Jesus' time. They was already in slavery. So everybody, Judah was the main faction left, so they called everybody Jews that was left. But really, the national name is Israel. That's who he's talking to. He told Moses, again, Moses didn't orchestrate any of this. Moses didn't dictate any of this. This is a one-way conversation from God to Moses to give to the people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, told Moses, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning what? The feast of the Lord. Who feast? It didn't even say the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now he gave them to Israel, but they belong to him, brothers and sisters. Cut and dry. Concerning the feast of the Lord. Go ahead. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. You can't change holy. He said this is when you have your holy gatherings. Your holy convocation. We got some seats. Oh, we got some seats. You just had to get together, sit next to somebody. We got plenty of seats. So he said, you're going to proclaim these to be holy convocations. That means you're going to get together on these occasions to honor me. They, they special occasions. But they not just like you're going to do something on your own. God don't mind us having fun. We can celebrate a birthday or whatever. That's okay. Anniversary, we celebrate that. But the difference in that is those are not holy gatherings. Right. This is holy. We're here to honor the holy God. So this is sacred in a manner of speaking. He said, you're going to proclaim these to be holy convocations. Finish that verse, verse 2. Even these are my feasts. Even these are my feasts, the God of the Bible said. That's why I said this is Jesus' Passover. That other stuff don't belong to him, that people uh, are crediting to him. What's the first holy convocation that we have regularly? Go ahead. Verse 3. Uh -huh. Six days shall work be done, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest uh -huh. and holy convocation. See, every seventh day, and we dealt with that a little bit last Sabbath, every seventh day is the Sabbath. It don't have nothing to do with the moon. It's not Sunday. It's what we call Saturday. And we get together every, every week, the last day of the week. We're going to be here tomorrow to continue to recognize it. We're here tonight specifically for the Passover because it's the, the beginning of the 14th day of the Lord's first month. And that go according to the moon. We know how to calculate it. The Lord made it where you can calculate it. But everything is not calculated by the moon. For instance, Pentecost, when you get to the 50th day, you don't use the moon at all because Pentecost means 50. You don't use the moon. You just 
he t- you start counting Sabbaths once you get your first fruits. That's the, that's the trigger point. You get the first fruits when you reap the harvest. Then you, when you reap the harvest, you got to take a bundle to the priest the following first day of the week, tomorrow after that next Sabbath. You take it to the priest, whatever week that is, whenever you take it to the priest. And from that day, from the first day of the week, when you take it, you start numbering seven Sabbaths. So you didn't need the moon to calculate this. But this, yeah, the moon calculates months for God. But the sun calculates days, and from days you get weeks. So I said all that to say is the Lord got it where we can figure it out and do it. Some people think when it comes to the Lord, it's just too hard and too difficult. Oh, well, how you know it's that? Look, you ain't never asked nobody how to calculate Easter. I know how they calculate these. The average person don't even have a clue. They just go to church on Sunday. Whenever they say Easter is, they there. And they don't even calculate Easter like you know how they calculate Christmas. They just told you it's December 25th, right? So every year is on that date. But you know Easter move? So don't think it's strange because the Passover and these days move. Easter move, don't it? You know why it moved? Because they use the moon to calculate. They don't do like the Lord. They know how the Lord do his. They want to do it different, though. But they do it on some Sunday after the first, first full moon, after the equinox, the first Sunday. But they use the moon. Right. That's how they calculate Easter. That's why it switches every year. So we, we know how to keep up. Today is the 14th day of the Lord or the first month on the Lord's calendar. But he gave you the weekly Sabbath first. He said, you, it's a holy convocation that you finish. Uh, you at verse 3? Yes, sir. Go ahead, read 3. Six days shall work be done. Uh-huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. What is it? And holy convocation. Uh-huh. Ye shall do no work therein. Uh-huh. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. That's the Lord's Sabbath in all your dwellings. So if today happened to be it, but we here to honor the Passover. We'll be back to honor the seventh day Sabbath tomorrow. We still got to honor that. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord, Mm -hmm. even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their season. Now he he gave you the constant weekly Sabbath every seventh day. He gave you that first, got that out the way, because that's constant. Then now immediately he get into the yearly festivals that come throughout the year. So these are one one once a year festivals. Today is the first one of the year, and it's showing you the beginning of God's plan for the salvation of man. Remember, Jesus said salvation is of the Jews. Well, he didn't show it all to the Jews, beginning with the Passover on a yearly basis. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocation, which you're going to proclaim in their seat. They holy gatherings, though, special occasions. That's why we stopped everything to come. I know everybody was busy, busy as ever today trying to get here, but, hey, we got here, we let everything else go. Go ahead. And the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Who Passover is it? The Lord's Passover. So you can't even say it's the Jews. Even though he giving it to Israel, it belonged to the Lord. In the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. See, the moon got its cycle, brothers and sisters. It started with the new moon. That's the new month. Man know it. They just don't use it in the West to calculate their to calculate their months. They just make their own their own months up. Starting with January first, they just make a month up. And they even will put the moon cycles on the calendar, but they not you. They put full moon just like right now. You getting you getting to the full moon because the full moon signal that's the middle of God's month. Because it then went halfway around. That's why it's full. Then it's going to make the rest of the cycle back to the beginning again, the second half of the month. That's why you look out right now, you see a big moon out there. Because we're in the middle of God's month. That's what the 14th day and the 15th day represent. So on the 14th day of the first month that evening is the Lord's Passover. Go ahead. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. So the very next day, that's why sundown tomorrow, we start the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We're going to be here to have a Holy Convocation Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock, but it starts Saturday night. All the leavening should be out. Most people got it out already. There ain't no sense in playing around. 
But go ahead. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. You must do it too. See, it's not even just that you don't eat leaven. See, it's bigger than that. When I was new in the word, I really wasn't eating unleavened bread. Probably the first year, I wasn't eating unleavened bread seven days because I didn't even understand it like that. I just wasn't eating no leavening for that week. I was going to play. I remember I was visiting my sister in New York doing the feast. Her husband kept trying to give me some bread, all kind of, come on, let's go to town. I wanted to give you that. No, I can't eat none. But I remember I wasn't eating no unleavened bread. But so that's the key. It's two components. You can't eat no leavened bread, but you need to eat unleavened bread for seven days. That starts tomorrow night at sundown, and it'll end the following Saturday night. He said, in, it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, 15th day of the month, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, unto the Lord, seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Go ahead. Verse 7. And oh, no, that's good, because we're dealing with the Passover. So I don't get too far into that. Let's go to Exodus 12 and show you the first Passover. Exodus 12. Exodus 12. Exodus 12 and 1. This is the very first Passover. Again, i show you how awesome this is. This is way before Jesus was born and died for our sin, but it was planned back here. Twelve and one. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, now, saying. Now notice all this coming from the Lord. That's who it's coming from. Go ahead. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh-huh. Speak ye unto all the congreg congregation of Israel, saying. And the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. Okay, so they had to get a lamb. We had some chairs up here. Some of the brothers could have been sitting up here, but I guess you thought they were just up here. But so he said, the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron. He's talking one-way conversation when they was in Egypt. First he said, this month shall be unto you the beginning of the month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Let it, letting it be known, the Egyptians obviously had their own first month. Other, so it's nothing wrong. Other people have their own, but the Lord told you when his first month would, be, would begin, and it's at this time of year when things become new again, what we call the springtime. It's the beginning of renewing the earth because now you got past the winter and you coming into some good weather. The days get long and all of that. This is the Lord's beginning. That's why they're going to have a Ten Commandment movie on TV commemorating this time when Israel came out of Egypt. Every year. Because they know it was this time. But it don't start in March or April. It starts during that time whenever the new moon, the first new moon come. Yeah, yeah. Some of the brothers come up here. The elder brothers is laboring in the vineyard. So this is this is the beginning on the Lord's calendar. It, so this is when he told them they're going to get the lamb and prepare for this Passover. But go ahead. According to the house of their fathers, mm -hmm. a lamb for an house. Uh-huh. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. That lets you know they was doing this kind of on, on a family basis. They did it on a family basis. They all had to get a lamb. You hook up with your neighbor or whatever to get it. But we honoring the real lamb. We ain't getting no physical lamb. We ain't doing that at this time. But we still got the lamb because we know the real lamb is Jesus. That's who we recognize. That's why he gave the disciples the bread and the wine on the Passover and said, do this in remembrance of me. But go ahead. What verse yet? Middle of four. Uh-huh. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the land. Uh-huh. 
Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Uh -huh. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Uh -huh. You had to have a perfect lamb without blemish. Couldn't have no one with a broken leg. You know, because people be cheap sometimes. They be like, because that was their money. They're like, I got a lamb. I'm going to give a good lamb. Let me get that old lamb, no good lamb over there. Uh-uh. The Lord covered that. If you're going to give to the Lord, you want to give your best anyway. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Take it out from the sheep of the goats. What verse yet? Verse 6? Verse 6. Uh-huh. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. The 14th day of the same month? And the, we got a couple more up here. Come on. But go ahead. Finish that. Verse 6. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Uh-huh. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Okay. Go ahead. You had to keep it to the 14th day of the first month, and they had to kill it in the evening. Go ahead. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses. Wherein they shall eat it. Okay, so they had to take the blood and put it over the house. This is how they got saved. This was their salvation at this time. Skip to verse 11 to save a little time and go ahead. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Mm -hmm. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. It's the Lord's Passover. He's going to show you exactly what that means. It's not hard. See, God's plan is easy to understand. When they're giving you some made-up stuff, it's all confusing. It's like even Good Friday and Easter don't make no sense because you never can figure out what the Easter bunnies and rabbits have to do with Jesus. You'd be scratching your head forever. I wonder what they got to do with it. What's that? Why is it Good Friday anyway? None of, it just it don't make no sense. But Passover means what it say. Lord is simple. He's going to tell you why he called this day to pass over. Go ahead. Keep reading. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. Uh, you're going to pass through that night. Mm -hmm. This was serious business. Go ahead. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. He said, I'm going to come through killing, God said. I'm going to come through. I'm going to smite all the firstborn because he was dealing with the Egyptians for oppressing Israel. I'm going to smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Who? Both man and beast. Not even just mankind, the animals too. Go ahead. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. Uh -huh. What is he showing? I am the Lord. He's showing I'm the boss around here. Mm -hmm. That's what God's showing. I run this. I've been letting y'all have it y'all way. Y'all just been fooled. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come through and show you who run. He and he told him in advance. So it was like, really, Pharaoh, if you can stop me, you better do something. Because Moses told him in advance what was going to happen. And that's why Israel knew to put the blood over there. Get the lamb and be under the blood of the lamb. That's the only thing saved them. People talking about the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Well, you're looking at it right here. Go ahead. Verse 13. Uh-huh. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Uh-huh. And when I see the blood. When I see the blood. Because that shows everybody got some sin. And we need some help to get out of sin. And that's where the Lord. Because the Lord said, look, I'm, I'm killing the, I'm killing, I'm coming through to kill these Egyptians, but Israel, y'all ain't much better. Mm. I could just as well be killing y'all. So y'all going to have to follow my plan so I don't kill you. Show me you got some faith in me. Mm. That's what he's showing. Go ahead. I will pass over you. But, then, but that's how you're doing. When he see the blood where, in the houses where you are, he said, I will pass over you. That's what pass over means. Evidently, a lot of people don't care to get passed over for their sins now. Right. Because that's what it, it's signifying. But if you ignore it, you're saying, look, I ain't worried about that. I just want me some colored eggs. <laughs> but go ahead. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I do what? When I smite the land of Egypt. Go ahead. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Now, what day is it? It's the Passover. When they got passed over, the very first one. But he said, from now on, this is going to be a memorial. You're going to do this from year to year. Go ahead. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. See, it's a feast to the Lord. So, there is, so it's a celebration. And you know you had to be happy when you hear people out because there was some screaming going on. 
and you was up in your house where nobody hurt, nothing wrong. You know you could see the favor of God clearly because everybody else, it, it, it wasn't a house in Egypt and the rest of the people where it wasn't somebody dead because everybody got some firstborns in their family. I mean, it was people dead all over Egypt except with the people who believed in God. They didn't have no problem. you talking about being happy. So he says, it's a feast to the Lord. You're going to keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Go ahead, finish verse 14. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. That's why we're doing good to be here today observing this feast, right? Right. Skip over to verse 28. Let's see when it happened, what, what they do. Go ahead. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. So they did it. See, that was the commandment. He told them what to do, and Moses told the people, and they said, okay, we're going to do it. They went away and did it. We're going to see what, we're going to look at it in living color. Go ahead. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. He did it. Go ahead. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne until the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't have no mercy from top to the bottom. From Pharaoh on the throne to the captive that was in the dungeon. It didn't matter if it was the firstborn. You wasn't under that blood. You was dead. Even Israel, if you would have had some hard-head Israel, you know we got some hard-head Israelites. Yeah, that's some hard. Well, I don't, why I got to get that blood, man? We got to go through all this. Lord know where I'm at. You'd have been dead. <laughs> so he said, look, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, sat on his throne to the firstborn of the cap that was in the dungeon. Go ahead. And all the firstborn of, the, of cattle. And all the firstborn of cattle, Lord, killed them all. Lord know how to make a statement, don't he? Mm -hmm. And some of this same stuff going to go on nowadays. Very soon. Because they've been oppressing God's people for a long time like the Egyptians were. So it's just about over. You know, that's why it ain't no coincidence every time you turn around, an unarmed brother getting shot. But hey, that's about to come to an end. Go ahead. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. Why? For there was not a house where there was not one dead. That, see, we reading a story, but think about this in reality, being there with it happening. Right. Everybody got somebody dead in their crib. It's like, what in the world? Talking about getting your attention. Go ahead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night uh -huh. and said, rise up uh -huh. and get you forth from now, among, among see, my people. See, they've been telling them, look, we need to go. You need to let us go. But he was hard-headed. So now he ready to let him go for real. He see this is serious. He rose up in the night, told Moses and Aaron, y'all get out of here. Go ahead. Both ye and the children of Israel. And go do what? And go serve the Lord, as ye have said. See, that's what they've been telling him. We need to let us go that we can serve the Lord. Because we can't serve the Lord and serve you at the same time. So let us go. That's what God had been sending the message to him. Go ahead. Also, take your flocks and your herds. Because he had been playing with them. Well, you can go, but leave your flocks. I need them. Now he like, go, take everything, and he going to put a little tag at the end of that. Go ahead. As ye have said, uh -huh. and be gone. Be gone. Go ahead. And bless me also. And bless me, because I need some help, boy. <laughs> go ahead. And the Egyptians were urging upon the people. Oh, all of the Egyptians was urging. They was like, y'all got to get out of here. Because they just knew they all was going to die. You see the first, all the firstborn dead, they figured the second is next. Right. <laughs> it's saying the Egyptians were urging upon the people. Go ahead. That they might send them out of the land in haste. Uh-huh. But they said, we be all dead men. <laughs> they said, we all dead men. This stuff ain't no joke. Skip over to verse 43. This is where the Passover began. In living color, that's how the Lord introduced his holy days. He introduced them in living color where they were lived out. That's how important they are. But the, the, but the most awesome thing about it is it's bigger than what's going on right here in Egypt. Right. It got grand significance to the end of the world, even down to Jesus. Let's show you how awesome God is. 
And we're going to ignore it. And you mean to tell me Jesus is going to come a thousand years later, which we're about to get to. A thousand years later, pinpoint the very day that they were celebrating back here in Egypt when the firstborn died and say, yeah, I got it down that day. All, all the days in the year, that's the one. Not a day before, not a day after. I got to die on that day. Let's show you how awesome God is. Go ahead. Verse 43. Uh-huh. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. Uh -huh. There shall no stranger eat thereof. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. Okay, so now, it, wasn't, it was for Israel, but it's really for anybody, but you had to be a part of the covenant. You had to join in and be a part of the covenant. So he said, this is the ordinance of the Passover, no stranger eat thereof. That's a non-Israelite. But that was just letting it be known you just couldn't eat and go on about your business. A stranger, later on he's going to say a stranger could eat if he commit to serving this God, Israel God. In other words, you couldn't just think this is just a game and you come passing through town. Y'all doing the pass, so let me hang out with y'all. No, you got to be a part of this. So that's because this, again, this is a holy occasion. So no stranger eat thereof. But every man's servant is brought with money when thou hast did what? Read 44 again. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. Then he can eat. Go ahead, 45. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant couldn't eat. Go ahead. And one house shall it be eaten. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not carry forth out aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. Mm -hmm. Neither shall ye break a bone thereof. And even when Jesus was on the cross, that's why they made sure, the Lord made sure not a bone of his was broken. They wanted to break their bones because that's how they killed them in the end. They would break their leg or something while they was hanging on the tree. And when they went to break Jesus' leg, they found he was dead. They were like, okay. They didn't do it because the scripture got to be fulfilled. You can't break a bone there, 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. See, it wasn't no option for Israel. Israel was locked in. They didn't have no option. They had to keep it or die. Right. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. Stranger, they had to get on board to keep it. Go ahead. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee. See, back to the stranger. That's non-Israelite. That show you it was always open for anybody who want to serve the God of Israel. Because it's for everybody. Like Jesus told the woman at the well. He was trying to enlighten her. He was, he was getting her on board. She finally started listening to him instead of trying to tell him something. Once he told her, look, you don't know what you worship. You need to be listening. Salvation is of the Jews. Then she went and told all her people, yeah, I met a man. He told me all kind of stuff. I think this is the Messiah. We need to go listen to him. Mm -hmm. But that lets you know it's always been open for other people outside of Israel. They just got to come and do what Israel was told to do by God. So he said, Go ahead, what verse you at? Verse 48. Uh-huh. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee uh -huh. and will keep the Passover to the Lord. If a stranger sojourn with thee and want to do it, he can do it. Go ahead. Let all his males be circumcised. But he's going to have to be serious about it because when you tell him, well, look, you want to do that? You sure you want to do it? You want to keep the Passover? Yeah. Come on, let me cut you over here. Come on. He'd be like, wait a minute, wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. That's the only way you could keep it. That's why right now we tell brothers, if you ain't circumcised, you're supposed to be and keep it. But just even though you could come here, just don't eat the bread and drink the wine just to be safe. Mm -hmm. Because that was the ordinance. He said, if he was a stranger was sojourn with thee and keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. Go ahead. And then let him come near and keep it. Uh huh. He shall be as one that is born in the land. Now he just like you. Why? For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. So no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. So even though, hey, Israel's supposed to keep it no matter what, you really don't have no option. You just out in the cold. But we just tell brothers, even though you're here, just don't eat the bread and drink the wine until you get that taken care of. But know that you have to get it taken care of according to this. But now, let's go further. Go to, uh, if you didn't read 49, my fault, go ahead. One law shall be to you, to him. That See, is it's homeborn. one law for everybody. It's not something for the Jews and something for the Christians. 
The first Jews were the only Christians in the first place, brothers and sisters, because Jesus wasn't dealing with nobody else. But it's one law for everybody. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one law shall be to him that is homeborn and to who else? And unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. And unto the non-Israelite. That lets you know the door was always open for non-Israelite. How these Hebrews trying to exclude other people from joining on and serving the God of Israel is amazing. But you know the old saying, you try to dig a ditch for somebody else. You, the Bible say you mess around and fall in that same ditch. Right. That's why I say Hebrews better be careful who they try to exclude. You've been excluded yourself. Because right. strangers were always welcome. The Lord just started with Israel. But it's for everybody. But for, for the most part, Israel be the main, is, is the main ones. Like right now, the people that's waking up is mainly Israel waking up now. Because Israel is the only people God have known like that. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Because people sadly think that was something just for the Old Testament. And they, get, they make little statements like, oh, you got to have, we don't need that Passover now. We just need faith in Jesus. Look, I'm telling you, they were showing faith in Jesus just now in Exodus. Observing the Passover is showing your faith in Jesus. Hebrews 11 and 24. Let's, let's let the New Testament tell you that, though. 11 and 24. Go ahead, read it. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Oh, so that was faith way back there with Moses. That was the exhibition of faith. He gave up the riches of Egypt and went to, went to hang out with the slaves instead of being Pharaoh's grandson. He gave it up. How else did he exhibit some faith? Skip to verse 28 and read that. Through faith he kept the Passover. And the sprinkling of blood. Through faith, he must have kept Easter, didn't he? No, sir. Through faith, he kept the Passover. Moses. So that was faith back there. So don't let them fool you. Say, oh, we, they had to do works back then. We just got faith. And I, look, we always have faith, brothers and sisters. You show your faith by your actions. That's why I said this year is a clear distinction because today is what the world called Good Friday but we calling it the good Passover. Right. Because that's what it is. We got faith in the Passover, whereas other people showing they believe in a false God that they made up Good Friday. He said, through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Let's what? Let's he that, des that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. See, they would have been killed too if they didn't observe it. Israel would have died. Moses would have died. Well, Moses would have died because he wasn't the firstborn, but somebody in his family would have died if they wasn't under that Passover, the blood of that Passover lamb. Mm -hmm. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. 26 and 1. Matthew 26. Now, this is New Testament. So we can't relegate the Passover just to the Old Testament like people have thought. They act like the New Testament is telling us a whole other story. Oh, we got Jesus. We got Good Friday. That's the, way they, that's, that's the way they slid all this other stuff in. They act like New Testament just totally different from the Old Testament. Uh-uh. It's operating on the same page. It's one book. It's one law, one law, one faith. Matthew 26 and 1. Go ahead, read it. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings. Now we're dealing with Jesus. He talking. What did he say to his disciples? He said unto his disciples, ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Good Friday. Nope, Passover. Not at all. This is Jesus talking. A thousand years or better from Exodus 12 when the first Passover was observed. This is what Jesus was about, brother and sister. He didn't change nothing. He said he don't change. He said, you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. And the Son of Man is what? Betrayed to be crucified. See, leading up to this day in Jesus' time, the last one, 
before he died, he said in a couple of days, this is going to be it. Right on this day, the Passover, he said, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be betrayed to be crucified. And that's exactly what happened. But it's the Passover. That's how important it is. Skip to verse 17 because he said in two days, so let's get to two days later and see what happened. Lead, leading into him being betrayed and crucified on the very Passover. Go ahead, 17. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, uh -huh. saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Uh -huh. So now, he said, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because they kind of is real good for lumping things together, because we have to eat unleavened bread today, even though the feast starts tomorrow, you had to eat it with the Passover. They just called it all the Passover, all the unleavened bread, whatever. Even though the Lord distinguished the 14th day as the Passover, of the first month, the 15th day begins the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. He distinguished it, but it all go hand in hand. So that's why they said, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which technically would be tomorrow, but they wasn't on tomorrow back then. They was on today, getting ready to do this like we're doing tonight. They was getting ready to do it. So when that day got, because they knew that kind of kicked it off for this, this season. So it said, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came together to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Go ahead. And he said, Go into the city to such a man, mm -hmm. and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. Mm -hmm. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. See, Jesus had it hooked up. He told them where they had a place where they could go. They're going to find the guy. You tell him, My time is at hand, because he got to die now, brothers and sisters. Got to die on the Passover, though. That's how important this is to God. God set this up in ancient times, and Jesus come hit the nail on the head and die right on the day. Because actually, that was him back there setting it up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them. And they, what they make ready? Easter dinner? Go ahead. And they made ready the Passover. And they made ready the Passover. They hooked the meal up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Now when the evening was come, uh -huh. he sat down with the twelve. When the evening was come, that's why we started in the evening tonight. Same evening they was on, we on the same evening. We in good company. When the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. Twelve disciples. Mm -hmm. So, but we heard this being the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper and all of that. We reading clearly, why don't people know this is the past? That shows you somebody didn't put blindness on us. You can be going to church all your life. You just heard of communion and the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. They just totally removed the Passover. It can't be removed from the Bible, but they removed it from your mind right. where you don't even know nothing about it. This is what it was. It said they, they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was coming, he sat down with the 12, verse 21. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you. As they was eating... He said, truly, I say unto you what? That one of you shall betray me. See, one of the twelve was a thief and a crook and a, a thief, a cheat, and a lie. Mm -hmm. One of the twelve was. We know who that was. That was Judas. But it went on that evening. He got arrested. Judas had betrayed him, got a little payday from it, 30 pieces of silver. They came and arrested him, held him over the night. And then in the morning, he got crucified which was still the Passover because the Lord's day started in the evening. That's why tomorrow will be the continuation of the Passover until sundown tomorrow. Then begins the first day of unleavened bread, technically. But now, let's go to uh, Mark 9. Mark 9 and 31. Mark 9 and 31. See, Jesus foretold him dying on the Passover, being betrayed, crucified, and even foretold how long he was going to be in the grave, and that rules out that Good Friday, Easter Sunday lie that they have given us. That's worship of another God, brothers and sisters. This is what Jesus is about. This is his Passover. You're going to honor Jesus. Why not just do what the Bible say, brothers and sisters? How, how, why is that so hard? Only Satan can make people think that doing what the Bible actually say is wrong. 
Only Satan would do that. Don't you know that's amazing? You could almost join any religion of the world except a religion that say, do what the Bible say. Right. What you doing? What you trying to say? <laughs> right. Mark 9 and 31. Go ahead. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, uh -huh. and they shall kill him. Uh -huh. And after that he is killed. He shall rise the third day. See, he said, look, he, gone, he taught his disciples. And this was hard. You know, it's hard to tell people some hard times going to come in when you don't see it. We don't want to listen to it. We don't want to believe it. Just like we've been saying, look, great tribulation is coming. Time's going to get worse. You know, to probably a lot of people, they go in one end out the other because you ain't looking forward to that and you don't want to think about that. But it's going to happen. So right here, he telling them about some hard times that was coming. He taught his disciples and said, and said, he's going to, the son of man, talking about himself, because he's the son of man. He kept calling himself the son of man, the son of man, the son of man. The son of man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he will rise the third day. That's a great miracle in itself. He said he's going to rise the third day. Now, if you don't understand how terminology, sometimes you just, if you're talking loosely, you would say the third day. But if somebody gets specific, just like if I, if I go on vacation and I say, well, look, I'm going to be gone a week, it might just be six days or it might be eight days, but I ain't got to get specific. But if you get specific, I say, look, I'm going to be gone six days and six nights then that's more specific. So that's what you have to understand. Because some people say, well, it's at the third day, so maybe uh, you could just count Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. No, you can't count. He didn't mean third day like that. If you just took it that way, you might can get away with it. Because they say he died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday. But he going to clear something up for us here. Go ahead to... Uh, you read 32, read that first. But they understood not that saying uh -huh. and were afraid to ask. Him. Now, what is it hard to understand about that saying except you really don't want to deal with it? What, what do you mean they understood not that saying? He said, I'm about to get killed. They're going to kill me and I'm going to rise again the third day. But they ain't want to even hear that. Even when he started telling them one point, Peter said, man, that ain't going to happen to you. All that bad stuff ain't going to happen to you. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Matthew 12, Matthew 12 and 38. 12 and 38. 12 and 38. Matthew 12 and 38. Matthew 12 and 38. Go ahead. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after the sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, uh -huh. but the sign of the pro prophet Jonah. See, they wanted to see a miracle, but they really didn't believe in it. They just wanted to put him on the spot, you know, test, test the waters with him. But he said, the evil and adulterous generation seeketh the sign. When you got the word, you really don't need no sign because you believe they should have known who he was without him doing a miracle, even though he was doing the miracles, which really showed who he was. But they want to try to put him on the spot. He said, the evil and adulterous generation seeking not the sign. But I tell you what, I'm only going to give you one sign at your request, and that's the sign of the prophet Jonas. What's that sign? Verse 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay, so now he got more specific. It wasn't just the third day he was going to rise. You know, you just talk loosely. You say three days or the third day. But now if you get specific, you would say three days and three nights. That's what he said here. Just like the same way, if you was paying for a cruise, you would want to get a little specific. You would not pay for a cruise 
that calls for three days and three nights. You wouldn't pay for that cruise, and they tell you, well, you leave leaving Friday night, and you're going to be back Sunday morning. You'd be like, wait a minute, hold on, wait, wait, wait one second, wait, wait, wait. Friday night, that's going to be one night on the boat. Saturday is going to be one day on the boat, because you didn't get there till Friday night. That's where they say Jesus was in the grave. Saturday night, that'll give you two nights on the boat. Two nights, only one day Saturday. And they tell you, you checking out early Sunday morning before sunup. You're going to be like, I need some money back. Right. <laughs> you told me it was three days and three nights. Right. No, no, it just means three days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm like, give me my money back. That ain't going to work. Right. See, Jesus got specific. He said, for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That's a great miracle for them if they listen to it. But if you ignore it, if you celebrate Good Friday, say he died then and rose Easter Sunday, you ignoring it, you denying him. You worshiping somebody else. That's what they're giving you. They just figuring out a way to get you on Sunday to have you worshiping. But now, let's go further. Go to John 1. So we know Jesus, in order to be out of the grave, early the first day of the week, like it said in Matthew 28, when you read it, it said it was still dark in John 20. Matthew 28, it said, as the sun was coming up, the women went there. The angel told the women he was already gone on Sunday morning, first day of the week. After, after the Sabbath, the Sabbath was still the seventh day. First day of the week was what we call Sunday after the Sabbath. He was gone. Why? Because that year the Passover had to be on a Tuesday night. So he was eating a meal with his disciples a Tuesday night, and he didn't get buried until Wednesday night. So that would have been your three days and three nights, Wednesday night, Thursday, Thursday night, Friday, Friday night, Saturday. That's three days and three nights. And he would have came up the same time he went in, Wednesday night, he came up the same time Saturday night. By the time they got there Sunday morning, he was gone. But it has to be, according to Jesus' own mouth, three days and three nights. John 1 and 29. But why is that? Why did he have to go through all of that? Because of this right here. Go ahead. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him. And what he called Jesus. And saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. See, John knew who Jesus was. He is the Lamb, and not just any Lamb. He is that Passover Lamb. Mm. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That's what the lambs did in Egypt and all the way up until Jesus. They were signifying Jesus being able to take away the sins or pass over your sins. That's the same difference. Getting your sins taken away or getting them passed over mean the same thing. See, it's bigger than Egypt. But now let's go to 1 Peter 1. But that's where the stage was set long ago in Egypt. And people want to do away with that. Oh, we do away with that. We just do, you just do anything. Now, Jesus understands. No, he understands you don't believe him. 1 Peter 1 and 18. 1 Peter 1 and 18. Go ahead, read it when you get it. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. Money can't get you out of your sins. So you wasn't redeemed with co corruptible things. That's what money is, silver and gold. We ain't even got none of that. We talking about some dirty paper. Right. None of that can't help you. Silver and gold can't help you. You know can't no paper money help you. You know you would, for as much as you know, you would not redeem with corruptible things as silver and gold. From what? From your vain conversation received by what? Tradition from your fathers. So your foolish existence, your vain way of life that you've been following, that's you can't get redeemed from that. Your sinful ways, you can't get redeemed from that with uh, silver and gold. Go ahead. 
Verse 19. Uh-huh. But with the precious blood of Christ, mm -hmm. as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. Oh, with the precious blood of Christ. That's what redeemed us. The precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without spot and without blemish. Remember we read in Exodus 12, it said, when they got a lamb, it had to be a perfect lamb without blemish, it said. Signifying Jesus to come way back there. And he going to come and die on the day. Everybody telling you he is the lamb. And you going to ignore the day that he set up to honor him. And you going to do some more stuff. That's like a slap in the face to God. Like, God, we don't care about what you're saying. You're going to save us no matter what we do. Okay. You read 20, read 20. Verse 20, mm -hmm. who barely was foreordained before the foundation of the world. See, this plan was set in motion back at the foundation of the world, before the foundation. Mm. The plan was set in motion. So it's easy for God to share the plan with us in Exodus, right? That's what he's doing. He's sharing the plan with us. He's trying to show us how to get saved from our sins. He gave it to his people Israel, which later they shorthanded to Jew. No wonder Jesus says salvation is of the Jews. Go ahead. What was manifest in these last times for you? See, it, it, was, it was ordained back then, but it just came to pass when Jesus came on the scene. All those years later, just like it was years from Exodus when Jesus came and died, but he hit the nail on the head on the Passover. Isaiah 53. Already, already foretold. That's why you got stuff like this. You got Hebrews kick on Jesus, kick on the New Testament. I just read the, the Old Testament to him then. Right. Tell us about this then. Who is this? Isaiah 53. See, he's been foretelling the plan because God not making up a plan as he go. That's the thing. I had a hard time believing just traditional Christian when I was seeking the Lord and going to church. They couldn't make it because they really worshiping another Jesus, so they couldn't make it make sense. But nobody even said, well, okay, you said, well, Jesus died for my sin. Hey, I'm analytical. Why? Why he died for my sin? Who told you that? Where? Why? But it's all over the Bible. But you really, you can't, you can't be simply a New Testament Christian and understand that. You have to be a Bible follower to really get it because he's been showing you from day one that you need your sins passed over. And blood have to be shed. Isaiah 53 and 1, read it. Who hath believed our report? Mm -hmm. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Uh -huh. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a ground of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Mm -hmm. He is despised and rejected of men, mm -hmm. a man of sorrows, and a acquainted with grief uh-huh and we hid as it were our faces from him uh-huh he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he hath borne our griefs see somebody had to pay the price for us somebody had to bear our griefs and they had to suffer to do it and he was the man for the job because most people won't, don't want to go through nothing for nobody let alone death mm. go ahead and carried our sorrows uh-huh yeah we did esteem him stricken Smitten of God and afflicted. Mm -hmm. But he was wounded for our transgressions. See, somebody had to be wounded for our transgressions. This had to be an individual had to come and do this. So if you don't believe in Jesus, you still got to tell me who it is. Right. He was wounded for our transgressions. Go ahead. He was bruised for our iniquities. See, that's what you was doing to the lambs. You killing the lamb and the lamb haven't done nothing. But they had to real, literally slit a, Plenty lamb's throats daily, really, but definitely every Passover, they was cutting lamb's throats all across the land to prove a point that sin is deadly and blood have to be shed for it. So, but that was all pointing to him. That's why he went through all of this. Nobody don't want to go through all of this. He went through it. Because that's the plan of God. He was wounded for our transgressions. Go ahead. 
The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh -huh. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and what? And with his stripes we are healed. See, he took some stripes so we could be healed. Go ahead, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. Uh -huh. We have turned every one to his own way. Uh huh. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, we all in messed up and the Lord put all our sins on him. Go ahead. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. He had to deal with this. He was oppressed and afflicted. Hadn't done nothing wrong either. Go ahead. Yet he opened not his mouth. Uh-huh. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Oh, just like a lamb to the slaughter. See, that's why he's called the lamb of God. Because a lamb won't even resist, really. We lead a lamb to the slaughter, they won't even resist. Right. Can't even put it, won't even put up a fight. Mm -hmm. And Jesus could have put up a fight if he wanted to. But he behaved like a lamb. That's why he's called a lamb of God. That's why they started with lambs in Egypt for the Passover. Go ahead. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he did what? So he opened, if not, his mouth. See, he opened his mouth. He didn't open his mouth. When he could have got off, Pilate would have let him off. If Jesus would have put up any kind of defense, Pilate would have let him go. Pilate wouldn't let him go. Pilate was like, man, help me help you, man. Come on. <laughs> Give me something. Right. <laughs> Jesus wouldn't help him at all. He's like, man, I know you ain't did nothing. He said, he said they, they envious of this guy. Then his wife called and said, you better not have nothing to do. He said, I'm trying to get the dude off. Dude won't listen. <laughs> so he went out there and said, look, I washed my hands of this innocent man's blood. And Israel, our ancestors said, that's okay. His blood be on us and our children. Silly. But go ahead. Verse 8, mm -hmm. he was taken from prison and from judgment. Uh-huh, he had a little quick trial, mock trial with the high priest. They held him over, then he had a trial, and what else? And who shall declare his generation? Why, what happened to him? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. He was killed, why? For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He was killed for sins, to get your sins passed over. Go ahead, but what? But that was good in the end, though. Go ahead. And he made his grave with the wicked. Uh huh. And with the rich in his death. Why he make his grave with the wicked? Because Cause he, he died with two thieves mm -hmm. next to him, one on the left, one on the right. So he he made his grave with the wicked, but he said with the rich in his death, he was even buried in a rich man's tomb. He wasn't rich when he walked there, but he was he was buried in a rich man's tomb, and also. Of course, hey, the real riches is hey, when he come up out that grave. Mm. But go ahead. Because he had done no violence. He hadn't done nothing wrong. What else? Neither was any deceit in his mouth. And he hadn't, no deceit was in his mouth. But he went through this for what? Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why? He hath put him to grief. Why? When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. See, he was an offering for sin. See, this is the Old Testament, way before you get to Jesus. See, when you get to understand this, then you can understand Jesus. Go ahead. He shall see his seed. Uh -huh. He shall prolong his days. Mm -hmm. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. See, that's speaking about the resurrection. Even in three days and three nights. He had to be resurrected because you can't be offered up for sin and then still see your seed unless you come back. Right. He said... And he shall prolong his day. See, he got, see in verse 10, he got killed and resurrected in that one verse. Read that verse again just to show you how the Lord be showing you stuff. Go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. So he getting bruised when he getting killed. That was when he got bruised. And that was pleasing to the Father because the Father took it as an offering from him on our, for our behalf. Go ahead. He hath put him to grief. He put him to grief. Go ahead. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. See, his soul, which soul is a body. People don't think his soul is something inside of you. Now, the only soul inside of you is the inside of your soul. We are souls. We souls. So when he died, his soul was killed and offered for sin. Now, we got an immortal body that the Lord going to give us at the resurrection. But, but we, we all we got. We souls. That's why I say his soul was offered for sin. That means he got killed for sin. Go ahead. He shall see his seed. Then it says he shall see his seed. That means he's back alive. Go ahead. He shall prolong his days. I thought he got offered for sins because he's back alive now. Go ahead. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Let's go to uh, Acts the 8th chapter. We're almost done. Acts the 8th chapter. 
After we finish this, the choir can get ready to come up because they can uh, take us into the communion of the Passover while the brother's preparing it. Isaiah, I mean, Acts 8 and verse 30. Acts 8 and verse 30. Go ahead, read it. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said. Now, this was set up because the angel sent Philip down here to catch this, uh, this brother from Ethiopia that was going back to Ethiopia. The angel sent him to meet him in a certain place on the chariot. And so when the angel told Philip, you know, that's where you need to go to the chariot, it said Philip ran thither to him. And when he got over to the chariot, he heard the brother reading. What did it say? And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and he, said. He heard him read the prophet Isaiah. He was reading what we just got through reading. Because that was Isaiah. Even though it's spelled different, we ain't going to get upset about it. Like, brother, oh, you got to change that. Look, language barrier is something else. You try talking to somebody who speaks another language, it would be frustrating. I didn't try it. You try to figure out just two words. What? Huh? So the translations, yeah, that changed some letters. It changed things around. Hey, that's the difference in the language. This was translated from Greek, so Isaiah spelled with an E. We ain't going to get upset about it. We know what it's talking about. That's why I don't bother. You know, some Hebrews be trying to change it. Well, it wasn't no J, so you got to make it a Y. You ain't did much. You're going to make it a J or Y, okay. I don't think you got to go through all that. I don't think God going to get mad if I just say what it say to Jay. <laughs> he, but he heard him read I, the prophet Isaiah, and what did he say to the brother? Go ahead. Understandeth thou what thou readest? See, and that's the key. We can read the Bible, but yet not understand. And to understand the scripture, we do need somebody to guide us or teach us in it. That's the way the Lord got us set. That's why Jesus was going around teaching. He sent apostles around teaching. He sent prophets to teach people. That's why he do it that way. Understandest thou what thou readest. Go ahead. And he said, how can I except that, some man should guide me? See, he was smart. He said, no, nah, I really need some help. I'm struggling with this thing. Mm -hmm. How can I except some man should guide me? That's how the Lord got it. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. You be thinking, you be thinking, you know, you seeking the Lord. Lord, show me. You might read the Bible. I used to read the Bible and try to get guys from the Lord. I'm like, I knew something wasn't right. I still was messed up trying to figure it out. I'm waiting on the Lord to come talk to me. I'm like, Lord, you got to show me something. Show me something. I'm thinking the Lord going to start, oh, Elijah, okay. <laughs> but he just sent you somebody, and they start teaching. Next thing I know, I was in the right place at the right time. And somebody started guiding me in the scripture. So the Lord heard my prayer, but it didn't come like I thought it was going to come. Right. Just like this guy right here. He said, understand, Philip said, you understand what you He said, how can I let some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Verse 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. Which he read was this. What was it? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Uh-huh. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. So we know he reading what we just read in Isaiah 53, right? Yeah. Go ahead. And his, humil and his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Mm -hmm. And who shall declare his generation? Why? For his life is taken from the earth. See, he's cut off out of the land of the living. His life is taken from the earth. Same difference. He got killed. It was prophecy of the real lamb being killed. Go ahead. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? He said, who the prophet Isaiah talking about here? I'm trying to figure this out. He needed some guidance. He said, he talking about himself? Go ahead. Of himself or of some other man? Well, who he talking about? Some other man. Who is that? I'm trying to figure this one out. Go ahead. Then Philip opened his mouth. And began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. See, Philip knew all about it. He said, man, this is Jesus. That's the one that came and paid the price. And there's too many other scriptures to show the same thing. Right. See, the whole New Testament is fulfilling, starting to fulfill things in the Old Testament. Still a lot left to be fulfilled, right. but it's the beginning of the fulfillment. 
So Jesus had came and fulfilled Isaiah 53 by this time. 1 Corinthians 5. One more after this. 1 Corinthians 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. 1 Corinthians 5. First Corinthians 5 and verse 7. Go ahead, read it. Yeah, the choir can come up and get, get ready. Go ahead. Purge out there for the old leaven. See, now people think that the, the feast is just for the Old Testament. But he said, no, purge out there for the old leaven that you can do what? That ye may be a new lump. That you may be a new lump. Why? As ye are unleavened. See, we, you are unleavened. That's why we celebrating the Feast of Unleavened Bread because it signifies you getting rid of sin out of your life. But it start with this day to get rid of sin. This is the beginning of you getting rid of sin. You needed some help in the first place. And that is to get passed over for all your mess ups already. But then you got work to do. That's why we go right into the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You got to purge out the leaven that you may be a blue lump as you are unleavened. Go ahead. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Now Christ is our Passover. Don't have nothing to do with He don't have nothing to do with Good Friday or Easter, but he is our Passover, according to the Bible. So that's why we're here to celebrate his Passover. But read a little further here, because you go right into the feast, and we get rid of the leaven, and we eat this unleavened bread for seven days after this Passover to signify our walk with God. But it's not about this bread. Because this bread can't really help you. Not eating leavening don't help you. It's what it signifies what you really need to know. So what's the real leavening that you're getting out of your life that this bread signifies? Go ahead. Therefore, let us keep the feast. There, see, you talking about keep the feast. That's what we're going to do. we starting the night and we moving forward. Go ahead. Not with old leaven. We're getting rid of the old leaven. Go ahead. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. See what it stands for? But what? but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Uh-huh. Let's see what that means. We're going to read a little further. Go ahead. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, mm -hmm. yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, mm -hmm. or with the covetous or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. See, right, right here, he's talking about getting rid of the leaven. Look, we can't just, if we, if we under the blood of the Passover lamb, and we dealing with unleavened bread, that means we know sin must be out of our life. We can't continue to sin, fornicate, be covetous, idolatrous, and think that you, just because you not eating no leavening for a week. Now, this is the leavening you really got to get rid of. Go ahead. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be see, a fornicate. See, he, trying, he trying to show them how to get rid of the leavening in their life. Or among their congregation. He said, but now I've written unto you not to keep company. See, sometimes you got to be able to show some tough love. Not to keep company if what? If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator. See, if any man that's called a brother. Because there's plenty of fornicators in the world. Hey, only way we can reach some of them is talk to them. But now if you got a brother here that insists on fornicating, that can go for a sister too. But he's starting with the brother that insists on fornicating. If any man has called a brother be a fornicator, what else? Or covetous. Or covetous. What else? Or an idolater. Or an idolater. That's still wrong. What else? Or a railer. Or a railer. Go ahead. Or a drunkard. Or a drunkard. Even a drunkard. Go ahead. Or an extortioner. Or an extortioner. What? With such an one know not to eat. See, he's using the Feast of Unleavened Bread to show you, hey, you, we got to draw the line on sin, brothers and sisters. See, so that's the big picture. It's not just about this bread that we're going to eat for seven days and the other bread we're going to get rid of for seven days. When you come under the Passover lamb, you're getting rid of sin out of your life. One more place, Luke 22. Luke 22. And it's the scripture at the bottom because this says it all. We read a little bit of it in Matthew, but Jesus said it a little more poignant here. Luke 22 and 15. 
And then the brothers going to prepare, and they're going to pass out, so just stay seated. They're going to pass out the Passover bread and, and wine, and uh, we're going to all take it together. Don't, don't get greedy. Don't take it. We're going to do it together. Let's hold on to it till we all say a prayer and take it together. 22 and 15, go ahead. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. See, Jesus not only was keeping this last Passover of his life before he died, he desired to do it. He said, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And you're going to have people throw this away and talk about some, don't even mention it. Never even heard of it. And be worried about some Good Friday and Easter. Right. This is what Jesus is about. Go ahead. Or I say unto you, mm -hmm. I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Oh, this was his last one. That's why they come up with the last supper. This was his last one, but not permanently. He said until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. We ain't there yet, are we? No. So we should still be doing it. That's why he say every year, as off, Paul was talking about as often as we do it, meaning every year we do show the Lord's death until he comes. Go ahead. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. See, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. So he showed you, even though it's the same Passover day, signifying the lamb dying for you, he wants you to understand it's about him, brother and sister, not about a lamb that you would walk around on four legs that you kill him. Those lambs were pointing to him. It is about him, so that's why we got the bread and the wine. We don't need to be killing no lambs now anyway because we're not in place to do that. Right, right. They'll do it when we get back. When he get back, they're going to do it again because, but you kill the lamb, you're going to know he's the real lamb that it's being killed for. Right. But right now in the interim, we still recognizing the lamb. We still recognizing the death of the lamb. Why? Because the wine represents the blood that he shed. And the bread represents his body that was beaten and broken and killed for us. Go ahead. For I say unto you, mm -hmm. I will not drink of the fruit of the vine mm -hmm. until the kingdom of God shall come. He said, it's my last time doing this. I won't drink of the fruit of the vine. They let you know it was wine. So we don't substitute it. We don't have no grape juice for nobody. If you, like, if you don't want to drink wine, I understand that because I can't drink wine on nothing but today. Because I used to be a wine bibber. So, if, but if you don't want to drink wine, then you just don't do it. The Lord understand if you got that kind of problem, then don't do it. Nazarites, I imagine, couldn't drink wine because they had a vow saying they couldn't do it. So the Lord understand that much. But we ain't going to give you no substitute because ain't no substitute for it. Go ahead. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. Uh -huh. And gave unto them saying, uh -huh. this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. See, this do in remembrance of me. Now, people call themselves having communion any time of the month, first Sunday. Who told you to do it that way? Right. Last fourth Sunday, who told you to do it that way? When did he do it? On the Passover. That's when he did it. It's, it's, it's still about the Passover. If you're going to recognize his death, why not do it on the day he died, brothers and sisters? Right, right. Go ahead. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, uh -huh. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. <laughs> now they gonna, the brothers going to uh, start to get the wine together and the bread. Give us a few minutes. But we got, we got the uh, choir going to sing like they're on the Titanic. As the ship going down until we get it all passed out. So hopefully they can do it in one song, but we'll see.
Praise the Lord. What y'all got? What y'all got? Do the other one you did first? Let's do it. That's Jonah. That's Jonah. All right, y'all. Just hold on. We're almost done. Don't drink or eat yet. I know y'all thirsty.
Praise the Lord. Okay. Y'all can stand up a little longer. We, we just get a quiet air while they're up here. Y'all can sit down if you can get a seat. Okay, everybody good? Raise your hand if you don't have a Passover meal. Okay, why why to get the last few people? I'm gonna read this in uh Ezekiel uh, Second Chronicles thirty, and uh, I read Second Chronicles thirty, because what it's gonna show us is that uh, you know we know we're not perfect here. We're doing the best we can, especially now in a bad situation, and that's what Jesus tell you. Because some people say, well, you can't keep the Passover. In, in captivity, some people say that. Some people say, well, you don't need to do nothing anyway. You can't do it all. But Jesus said in Revelation, he said, strengthen the things that remain that are ready to perish. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Here's a good example here in Second Chronicles 30. I'm just going to read it. Second Chronicles 30, because Israel had been used to getting out of line with what God required. Even when they was in the promised land, they got out of line and stopped keeping these holy days. But they had, whenever they had a good leader, a good king, they turned them back to us. That's what Hezekiah was here in the Bible. Second Chronicles 30, he, even though a lot of them had went into captivity, he turned the battle to the gate and got them coming back to honoring God's holy days. And we're going to see when he did it, they couldn't get everything cleansed up and get it perfectly in order according to what the law said, but they, they just went on ahead and did it the, the best they could, and that's what the Lord uh, wants. So though we in a bad situation, we in an unclean land, we all full of uncleanness, but we can still do the best we can do. So... Second Chronicles 30 and 1, Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh and th that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. Now he did it in the second month for a reason. For they could not keep it at that time because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel from Bathsheba, even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not done it of a long time, in such sort as it was written. See, they hadn't been doing what's written. Just like we haven't been doing what's written. But now we starting to turn back like Hezekiah had them do. So they sent out letters to everybody. Look, come do this. Come keep the Passover to the Lord. And they end up doing it in the second month because it was a, uh, it was a, 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 a little loophole that if you wasn't clean the first month, you could do it the second month. Just like we'd do that nowadays. Somebody missed it this time. If they was out of pocket some kind of way, you could do it the second month. So that's what they fell back on. But now I'm going to skip to this down to when, he, when, when they actually did it because they was killing lambs and all that, so they didn't really need to try to be, you know, real particular. 
Verse 13, and there assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great congregation. And they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem. And all the altars for incense took their way and cast them into the brook of Kindron because all those altars, they was worshiping false gods on them. So they threw them out. Then, verse 15, they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the second month. And the priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves and brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. And they stood in their place after their manner according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites. Verse 17, we're almost done. For there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore, the Levites had the charge of killing the Passovers for everyone that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. For a multitude of people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh and Issachar and Zebulon, had not cleansed themselves. Yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, the good Lord pardon everyone. So we in an unclean situation. We ain't clean according to the physical laws of cleanliness. We could throw that out the window. There's no way to do that because we're in an unclean land. So we're not clean according to that. But we can still keep this and ask the Lord like Hezekiah did to pardon us. He said, the good Lord pardon everyone that prepared his heart. Hold on, babies. That prepared his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. Now, verse 20 tell you that the Lord heard him. Verse 20 said, and the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. So that's the same prayer we had that the Lord accept this sacrifice, this acknowledgement of his sacrifice that we're doing by partaking in this Passover. So we're going to get right to it. According to what Jesus said, you can hold a cup up, salute or whatever you want to do. We're going to eat the bread right now, which recognize the body of Jesus. Y'all already been drinking, ain't y'all? <laughs> and we're going to sip the cup, drink the cup, which recognizes his blood, which was shed for us. And all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So now we're going to stand and face the rules and close out. But I'm going to give a couple of announcements. Because we've been asking people to pray. We've been asking people to pray that the Lord keep guiding us and, you know, allow us to, you know, uh, put some things in motion. We need everybody to calm down because we're about to say the closing prayer, so it ain't over yet. That winding got to y'all already. <laughs> but I just want to say that the Lord blessed us. They, they keeping the pass over the night. They should be getting ready to do it in, in Vegas in a new location that we got a little storefront in Vegas. So the Lord bless them with that. And also, they, they having their first service in Indianapolis at a little new storefront. They got down there. They having their first service tonight. So pray. Well, they had it. They probably done now because they, they ahead of us. So that's a blessing. And the last thing is we still working on the school Keep praying for that. We had a little test today to get to see if the water, make sure the water don't have lead in. We don't want the children drinking lead. As you know, that can happen. So uh, we getting close. Lord willing, we'll be closed in a couple of weeks, but keep praying. The Lord's will be done. <laughs> now we're going to have to close in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. 
Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. That will be done. That will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power and the glory and the glory forever forever praise the Lord praise the Lord for he is good for he is good and his mercy endures forever and his mercy endures forever praise the Lord God of Israel praise the Lord God of Israel for he is good for he is good and his mercy endures forever and his mercy endures forever in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray the Passover lamb the Passover lamb the king of kings the king of kings and lord of lords and lord of lords amen Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.